I want to give a shout out to these developers for uh, really innovating the Crash Bandicoot series. I didn't think it was possible before I played this game that they could turn Crash Bandicoot into an MMORPG. But, uh, I mean, they didn't include the MMO part, but I didn't realize until now how much I wanted a Crash Bandicoot game that was all about grinding. So it's been about a week since the last stream of this. Actually, we didn't do any other streams between now and then. It's, it's been it's been a, a chaotic week. But uh, I did manage to catch up on all the Platinums, except for Rush Hour. I haven't taken another crack at that yet. Should go better off stream, but I think we have five levels left. Three, yeah, we have five levels left. So this will be the second to last crash stream. Won't be as long as the last one. If we can get three levels done gold, I'll be happy. And then next time, we'll, it will totally polish it off. Unfortunately, these are, like, end-of-the-game levels. So these... That's, that could be a tall order. We'll see. Hello, Darian. Also, it's Thursday. I know I said that I would be doing these streams on Wednesday. Uh, I had to uh, I had to take my parents to the airport like early morning yesterday, and that, that just fucked up everything. I, I couldn't sleep at all Tuesday night. I gave up at like 5 a.m. Drove them to the airport at 7, and then just <laughs> attempted and failed to catch up on sleep when I got home, because it, it's too fucking hot to sleep. Oh. Yeah, it's been warm lately. Hottest day on record ever. For like the uh, global average was July 3rd of 2023. Excuse my start of stream rambling. I was just, just learning the level at first. That's how these go. I have had a lot of fun with this game. I realize, in, especially with a game as difficult as this, that the time trials don't seem that interesting to watch. Oh, I need to bounce him. It's just me memorizing the level over and over and over again, and then just kind of going through the motions until eventually everything lines up right. Ah, oh, come on. Okay, that three is going to be a little bit of a pain. Jack's been going through some stuff, so we didn't do any streams this past weekend. That's what happened Wednesday, so... Uh, I actually have the Mario 64 beta thing. I got that working, so it's ready to go. I, just, I didn't feel like doing it today. I, I felt like something low effort, and of course nothing is lower effort than, uh, than Crash 4. Maybe low effort's the wrong word. Familiar. This is a very difficult game, but it's it's a familiar game, so it's, it's comfortable anyway. Should probably gun that. Take a little less time. That's a box, so I don't need to worry about that. I haven't looked into... There, there's apparently also a Majora's Mask beta recreation project. So I gotta get that as well, if I can find it. even this is not an all cortex level this is i this is the crate escape i gotta go through all this and then i gotta do the actual hard part of the level i don't need to go to the right i can just i can just fly over the left half no oh, need that
What have you been doing lately, Darian? You pointed out to me there's apparently... So, you showed me a video of a person who did a speed run of a very specific five crash games. It, it was like the the crash games that people generally liked, the main the mainline crash games that people generally liked prior to the uh, to this one. It was a uh, Crash One, Two, and Three, Wrath of Cortex, and uh, Twin Sanity. Which even that's kind of vague, because did people generally like Wrath of Cortex? I guess it's mixed. But were, are there? multiple people who have done that, or was this just this one person said, this is a category now, I'm the only one who's run it, so I have the world record. Like, that, it's not that, is it? Can I... Do I even need that top one? Ugh, I do. I'll bet... Yeah, I can totally do that. That's the speedrun way. Can I bounce on that one, I wonder? I guess I don't need to. I can just I can shoot it. I don't like this guy. I don't like that bouncy, that, that trash dude. It's so close. Multi-games crash speedruns aren't a new thing, but those five are odd. Yeah, because I'm sure, like, the, the original trilogy, are there any others that people tend to do? In terms of, like, multiple game sets? And Cortex falls just a couple inches, and he immediately just struggles with ledges. Was that? Spyro games kind of come in sets, so I could see someone doing, like, the, uh, the two PS2 Spyro games smushed together, or the, the Legends trilogy. It would make sense to put Wrath of the Crash of the Titans and Mind Over Mutant together, if, you know, anyone wanted to speedrun those games. There's a speedrun category called Sprash Fecta. Okay. Combine the Crash and Spyro trilogies. The original, the Insane trilogy, or are there, like, both versions? They're very, very different games, but they are just similar enough that I guess I could see that. They definitely have a lot of crossover with the fan bases. This music track sounds like the, uh, sounds like Donkey Kong is mixed in there. I'm sure I'm not the first person to point that out. Okay, doing well, I think. Well, for not knowing the level, anyway. Ah! Hmm. 
You know what? Maybe I don't need to be so anal. Maybe, maybe this is all right. Because this is... I'm going for gold. I don't need... I don't need platinum for these stream levels. Until next stream. Next stream, I'm going to need platinum. Which is probably going to mean it'll be a long stream. I wonder what other series those uh, collection speedruns exist with. I, I, I conceivably like uh, Jack and Ratchet, but the Jack games are long games. I have a hard time picturing like all three of those in one sitting. If you're going for a hundred percent, even just like all three Crash games in one sitting is pretty meaty. Right, I'm sure professional speedrunners probably work a little bit faster than I did. I, I took like eleven hours for Crash Two. Although I'm sure it would go faster if I tried it again. They probably also don't go for all Platinums. If they're just going for 100% as the game considers it, then they just need all Golds. What the next big remakes will be. We got this. We got uh, we got the Crash trilogy. We got the Spyro trilogy. Were there any other like big remake trilogies or series? Obviously, there's remakes. There's Live Alive. There's uh, Final Fantasy VII. But I'm thinking collections. Because the rest of them, the, the when they make collections, they're usually just ports. Like the uh, not-so-well-received Mario collection. It's still baffling that that was on a limited-time sale. Why did they do that? Gex? I don't- I don't think I can. I don't think I can see Gex getting a... A revival, maybe. Not- not- not ports. Not- not, like, uh... Not because he doesn't have fans, but... I don't think he has enough fans to merit the effort of a- of, like, full... High-effort remakes. And he's- I don't feel like he's gonna get new fans with... You know, the types of references those games are full of. Zoomers don't even know what was going on in the, in the like, 2000s, let alone the 80s. I would like to remind you that Bubsy got two brand new games. Yeah, but Bubsy's a meme. Gex is neither good enough nor memetic enough, is kind of the... Pro That's why I also, like, doubt the rumors of a Croc remake, as much as I would personally enjoy that. Ignore that mask, I don't need it. I would love to see, uh, Ratchet remakes, especially if they added, like, features from the newer games. If Ratchet 2 had the weapon level-up system of Ratchet 3, that would probably be my favorite game in the series. Right now it's close between Ratchet 2 and 3, because 3 added a lot of really cool gameplay stuff, just engine-wise. 
but it also lost a lot. It lost a lot of the uh, just full dedicated platformer kind of stuff that two did. And it also hey, introduced some like questionable writing in three. How am I gonna do? I, I guess I do have to. I guess I do have to shoot that enemy. Is the safest way. I don't know about Jack. I don't know if if Jack and Daxter would necessarily benefit from uh, like a full remakes. Ports would be cool, especially to something like the Switch. It'd be cool to see Ratchet. Well. Ratchet and Jack games are not going to be on the Switch because they're Sony exclusive, but... I don't know. Jack might be cool. Sony still, like, cares about Ratchet and Clank, but I don't think they care about Jack anymore. I think they have more to benefit from porting it than they do keeping it exclusive. Ratchet is admittedly a, a console seller for some people, so... That one I get. Jack was kind of the... the loser of the three. In terms of uh, Ratchet Jack and Sly Cooper. He had great games. I, I just feel like people remember Jack less than the other two. Should have expanded on the engine of the Ratchet and Clank remake. Made the other two while they were at it. So I was gonna say, I don't know if that would. Does the Ratchet and Clank movie game count as a remake? Like, how similar is it to the original Ratchet and Clank? Does it include all the original levels and everything? Is it mostly the same game, but with a couple tweaks of story elements from the movie. I just assumed it was its own totally new original game. No, no. Nah. <sighs> that was not worth it. That was definitely not worth it. Very loose adaptation of the first game. Most of the levels and plot beats are there. But it's been tweaked a lot. I gotta imagine, is it the same, like, level layouts and everything? Okay, here... What is more different? The Ratchet and Clank movie game or the Final Fantasy VII remake? Final Fantasy VII remake, I guess, only really sets out to, uh keep the story of the original, and that's about it. But it sounds like the Ratchet and Clank situation is opposite, right? Well, no, because they're, they're adapting the story from the first game. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. Ah! About the same. Okay. Yeah, I guess it could be counted as a remake of sorts, then. How far is the Final Fantasy VII coming along? This is supposed to be a game in, like, three parts, isn't it? Have they even put out part two yet? I remember just the wait for part one was, it took forever, it felt like.
Part 2, early 2024. Okay, so it is still in three parts, though. I know people are wondering where the plot is going to go because it does deviate from the original game. I'm definitely more interested in the in the remake of Final Fantasy VII just on a gameplay perspective. I don't know if I'm interested in pay in paying, you know, $200 for the full trilogy of remake games, you know, when they're all finished in 2030. Is the writing in the Final Fantasy VII Remake? That's not to the same kind of degree as Final Fantasy XVI, right? The newest one? I'm seeing a couple of the of the YouTubers slash streamers I watch play that game. And it doesn't feel like Final Fantasy. It's very strange. I think I think Vinny was one of the ones who streamed it, and he was just like, when did Final Fantasy become Game of Thrones? It's clearly in there. Ow. I don't like this sequence. I haven't even gotten to the hard part of the level yet. I had a feeling this was going to be one of those levels. I didn't expect this part to be one of them. Also, I keep hitting the wall somehow. Everything about... Cortex is the most jank playable character in this game, easily. Like, we saw the lead shenanigans in, the, in one of the previous streams. He's just... All, every time he fires his gun, half the time it just goes into a wall. Because, like, the shot is wider than he is. How am I going to do that part? F Final Fantasy fans are, def are defending 16. I'm sure it's a fine game, like, gameplay-wise. It, it looks nice. I, mean, I hope so, being a AAA Square Enix game, it's not going to not look nice. Okay. I just gotta, I, I gotta avoid the bot! Were people clamoring for, like, Final Fantasy to take a new direction? I haven't kept up with the series. What do I know about Final Fantasy? I know 1 through 6 are, like, the retro games, and those all pretty much have their fans to varying degrees. 7 was the milestone that got a lot of people into the, into the games. No one remembers or cares about 8. Even though, it, I'm sure it's fine. It had some things noteworthy about it. A lot of people just seem to consider 8 a worse version of 7, though. It's a little sad for 8. Final Fantasy 9, I hear some things about. Uh, that's the one with, like, uh, Titus, right? Or is that 10? No, 10 is the one that had the, the characters that cameoed in Kingdom Hearts, right? I guess they come from a few different games, actually. But I, I mean the, the the Trinity Island characters, rather. I don't hear anything about 11 through... 11 on... I've, I hear people sometimes nostalgic about 9 and 10. I, no one talks about 11 through 12 that I know of. 
Are they fondly remembered? That era of Final Fantasy games? Which kind of goes back to my original question. Were people clamoring for Final Fantasy to, to do something new, like Zelda fans kind of were? And if so, does just Game of Thrones count as something new? I guess Strangers are... The Final Fantasy 1 remake is definitely something new, for better or for worse. I don't like that kind of, like, weird anachronism, but... The game had fans, right? Wrong button. Eleven is an online MMO from the PS2 era. That's, uh... See, that that's kind of what I was confused about. So Final Fantasy Eleven... What was, what was that called? I remember there was, like, Final Fantasy X2. And I thought that wasn't Twelve. I thought that was a sequel to Final Fantasy X. Or something. Is, is, is Final Fantasy X2, is that Twelve? How many of them were MMOs? I know they were doing that for a little while. It is a sequel to 10. But is it also 12? Or is, is there are there two games? Is there Final Fantasy 12 and Final Fantasy X2? That's a weird thing to think about. A sequel to a sequel. <laughs> Imagine Crash Bandicoot 2 2. Not to be confused with Crash Bandicoot 3. That's a different game. Just, just end me. What a strange situation the Final Fantasy X games are. Never driving around on motorcycles. I wonder how Jack feels about the Final Fantasy series. I don't I don't like that kind of really loose degree of anthology. Because the games, for the most part, they don't really tie into each other, like, at all, do they? They all had... They all or most of them have, like, Moogles and Chocobos and the same kind of spells, but that... Is that, like, the only thing they have in common? Dragon Quest is also an anthology series, but that, uh... Dragon Quest games usually at least reference each other. They have some, like, uh, the, the stories, some of them take place in the same world. It's more similar to Legend of Zelda, Dragon Quest. They're not limited to being in the same universe or anything, but they do frequently reference each other's, like, continuities, to my understanding. Even the spin-off games, like uh, Dragon Quest Builders 2 is a spin-off of Dragon Quest 2, which was like an NES game. Okay, I got- I made it this time. I got here the first time I tried this. Why- why did it take me this many time- tries to- Whatever. We're gonna- this is the run. We're gonna do it. See? Oh, this is the level. Oh, boy. Great. I gotta- I, I'm gonna have to, like, really memorize the timing of those for the Platinum. Maybe I can get away with not worrying about it right now, but... Because obviously, if I'm doing time trials, I can't stop and watch a pattern and then go. Oh, 
that's like a that's like a Crash Bandicoot one section. And then when I want to hit the box, it hits the enemy instead, because the rate the shot is so huge. Why's it got to be so big? Then you get games like Dissidia and Stranger Paradise that involve timeline and dimension shenanigans. Dissidia kind of has to, because that's, that's a crossover fighting game. Strangers of Paradise is, is a very... That's, that's a weird case, that one. I wonder, I forget if there was like a Dragon Quest Warriors. That's a series that I wish I, I was into. I'm kind of into it. I'm interested in it. Everything about Dragon Quest looks cool, like I'd enjoy it, but it's, it's just, it's so old, and there are so many games that I'm afraid to get into it now. That's a long journey. I don't know how many years I got left. It's also, I don't know how good the old games are. I, I, I think most of them have been remade in some way or another, so. Just, you know, Nintendo probably doesn't want to let me buy the remakes. Or the old games. Hey, when's Final Fantasy Warriors? When's that happening? That's a lot of boxes this time. can't stop for a second there. I don't know why I keep thinking I can. Like, that enemy... If the enemy's a trap. I turn him into a platform, and that makes me want to stand on him. It doesn't help that he's in a different position every time I come to the level. Dragon Quest is in a weird situation right now where most of the series has been ported, but only on mobile. Wasn't that Final Fantasy until they, like, put the mobile ports on Steam, like, a year ago? Yeah, I forgot that that's- they're both Square series. They're such very- they're very different series. It's weird that they come from the same company. I can't wait to get to the crates part of the level and just, like, die immediately. I'm not even getting any practice my first time getting there. Maybe I should be less anal. Maybe, maybe that's what's, uh... Maybe I'm just unnecessarily eating time. Because I'm fine with gold. For this!
This and this is the choke point. This dude right here. Maybe it's better if I just ignore that box. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I don't need that one box. I can go without that one second saved. Great. Oh yeah, awesome. Fall. Oh. Okay, so one, one, two, four. One, one, one. One, one, two, four, and then all ones. I don't like that section. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Dragon Quest is sub-owned by its composer. Pixel remasters of 1 through 6 were on Steam at the same time. Are you Which series are you talking about? Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest? Woo! This was a mistake! There's another section that I don't like. I can't even I can't even do a low bounce or I hit that guy. So pixel remakes, you're saying that they remade the Dragon Quest games, keeping them in the same like visual style but giving them gameplay updates? Or were they remastered but still using sprites? I feel like I need that three box. Like, that's gonna be a non-negotiable. However, I'm just gonna keep going because I'm not gonna get to the end anyway and I need to practice. Here's a, uh, magma take of mine. I don't like this new trend of everyone trying to mimic Octopath Traveler. I think using those those basic sprites in like a high bloom, really detailed 3D world looks very ugly, and I want to see less of it. That's okay, you don't have to agree with me, no one else will. They kind of remind me of Twilight Princess when I think about it. Just stylistically. The dark brown high bloom. Now we're going to take sprites and we're going to put them in a realistic world. And it's going to be innovative and beautiful and great. And definitely not just weird and off-putting. I wonder if there are Crash Bandicoot demakes. I'll bet there are. I'll bet people have a... Have D-made crash like one, two, maybe three in like the uh, handheld game style. The 2D platforming. That sounds like something that probably exists. This is going to be in the wrong... Exactly the bad position. The Super Mario RPG re remake is full 3D. Oh yeah, that, that Mario RPG is not a game that they would do in that style. But fu fucking imagine. Oh, that'd be weird. The Mario RPG sprites in like a, a realistic, bloomy, brown. Re uh, uh, I can't see that.
I wonder how involved Square were with that remake. Or slash R. If Nintendo, if Nintendo were smart, they'd make uh, mobile versions of the uh, or old Pokemon games. Those would be cash cows. I grant people can emulate them anyway, but a lot of people buy them, especially if they do like the uh, the 3DS Virtual Console did, and make them uh, Pokemon Home compatible. I guess it'd be limited to the first three generations, unless they wanted to... I'm sure there's, like, DS emulators on mobile. Nah, never mind. That would, that would work. It look. I can't imagine it looks good, though. Having both DS screens, like, squished together on a mobile phone screen. It would work, because mobile phones are, you know, touchpads, but... It seems like it would be very cramped in terms of screen screen real estate. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll get to the crate section and we'll just we'll do it in one try. Maybe it'll be the easiest part of the level. Oh god, I hope so. license holders I can think of might be a Nexon with Maple Story. Just because they're like really unreasonably committed to A not caring about making the game any better ever. And B like being super controlling about it and not letting fans either make their own versions or host old versions or just do anything except play on their shitty version that they want everyone to be on because that that's how they're that's where they want the money to be spent it's just like the epitome of, of mobile game logic is how Nexon has always handled maple story I have a very limited amount of time on that platform. Paper Mario, <laughs> but they do the thing where it's 2D sprites on a fully, like, reinvented, brown, gritty, realistic world. Imagine how off-putting that would be. I still think one of the uh, funniest... One of the funniest things to coincide with the video gaming, like, Brown is Real era... ...is the Smash Brothers level Mushroomy Kingdom. 
where they felt the need to take Mario 1-1 and make it gritty and brown and post-apocalyptic. Which really captures the degree of edge in gaming in that era, in the, in the mid-2000s. That Nintendo, of all companies, wanted to do that with Mario 1-1. Well, HAL, specifically. They make Smash, but, uh, you know. I'm sure Nintendo approved it. Oh, that's another thing I got to, uh... I was thinking about doing was, uh, Link's Crossbow Training. I gotta find a copy of that. Fortunately, I'll be able to play with motion controls because I have, you know, Dolphin Bar. What are the... the I was going to say, I wonder if there's speedruns of that game, but of course there's speedruns. There's speedruns of everything. It was. It was Mad Max Mushroom Kingdom. It was a weird level. I keep just not getting the second shot. Uh, let me take a, just, let me take just a second to look at this room, because I've never done so before. I just noticed this is like an office room with papers all over the floor and Uka Uka on the wall? Does someone have like a Pepe Silvia theory about an evil mask trying to rule the world? Charlie Day be like, I can't is full of Uka. If that enemy wasn't there, and I know that's why the enemy is there, to make it tedious and annoying and difficult. Jack and I uh, finished watching Amphibia. Definitely had a weak season, a, a weak final season, in our opinion. He's, he's now officially sick of the of the Disney Channel cartoons. So I, I guess for the best that they stop doing them. Because they got really formulaic. They're fine shows for the most part, but uh, they don't really take risks. Amphibia, the first two seasons were actually, they stood out because they had kind of witty jokes and they did surprise us a lot of the time. Not season three. Season three is just kind of by the numbers. Disney cartoon, same as Owl House. You know what's coming next. Okay, so one, one, two, four, and then the rest of these are ones. Also, a lot of the amphibians are a show that likes to likes to make references just for the sake of making references. The finale is basically just the plot of Majora's Mask. They're really not subtle about it. Okay. No, well, I don't want to do that. That was almost bad. Huh? Okay. Don't like this. Where am I going? Where am I landing? Okay. Oh boy. What are we doing? There's just there's stuff falling. I gotta avoid the stuff. But I don't have any immediate indicator of where the stuff is. Okay. 
Okay, here's here's the crate part. Here we go. Oh boy. I am afraid to like speed up and spin on the why does this have to be the end of the level? Okay, I just have to be careful. I think as long as I just make it. I also can't slow down too much because I actually can run out of platforms and not make it to the end. Okay. I think as long as I make it, I'll get gold. Yeah, I'm good. I just need to take 22 seconds off that for platinum. But that's okay, because I'll be doing that off screen. To what degree? Uh... While there was, like, a helmet that was controlling somebody, they, they beat the person and the helmet popped off, and then the helmet flew up to the moon, and the helmet made the moon come down. That that was how Amphibia ended. Spoilers, I guess, but uh, I, I guess I already spoiled it by saying it was just Majora's Mask. Alright, well, that was under an hour. That's fine. Uh... So, Nitro Processing and Toxic Tunnels. I would like to get those two done. Also, they, they explicitly just put a character in the Blink Breath of the Wild outfit. They, they weren't subtle about that either. All right, making sure those are just normal boxes. I, li I like that, a lot of normal boxes I don't gotta worry about. That's my first three box. Gotta get this guy. So far, this seems like a nice, normal level. I'm down for that, I'm I like a normal platforming level. The new stuff in this game is cool, but this is refreshing. Okay, here we go. Here's here's some not normal stuff. Don't need any of those boxes. Gonna be a lot of waiting, looks like. Maybe not. I, I can probably can speed a lot of this up, I'm sure. Recently, the developer who hired me to do artwork for his game sent me a test build of the game. He's currently looking for a publisher. Neat. Oh, what what kind of game is it again? Is it an RPG? Depending on how long it is, I probably wouldn't do the whole thing, but I I might be I'd be willing to stream and give it a test stream maybe. Celeste and Castlevania. I wanted to like Celeste. I just, it didn't click with me. Which I guess is hypocritical of me, because I was just saying... I think it was off-stream I had the conversation of, like, no one makes, like, Super Meat Boy kind of games anymore. Like, there's just not really a demand for hard platformers these days. Whoops. I need to go either immediately or when that guy's not doing his thing. I 
I'll, I'll give him a second. I'll bet I can make that without going to the right side. done that so many times I just I'm, I'm now failing to get the mask without exploding need to do like a buffer a jump. Maybe that that's what keeps me from exploding. Jack and I watched uh, another One Piece episode for the first time in a while. We've been busy with lots of other shows. Still in Dressrosa. We'll get through it one day. He suggested watching it at, like, uh, 1.5 speed. Just so we'll, like, see the end of it. It's already, like, One Piece episodes are already, like, 15 minutes each. Because every episode opens with, like, three minutes of, of intro of the opening song. And then another two or three musics, another two or three minutes of, uh, just recap footage and they know they don't need two or three minutes of recap but it's a way for them to animate less I wish there were more shows like Hunter x Hunter that just, uh, like, waited until there was a, a substantial amount to adapt. Which, I say that, but at the same time, Hunter x Hunter is not finished and probably won't be for... Jack think. Let me put it this way. Jack thinks that One Piece will end before Hunter x Hunter ends. Even though Hunter x Hunter is a much, like, more dense show... Even, even a, a, a better written show, I would say. And I, I hold One Piece in fairly high regard, believe it or not. With uh, no filler. Hunter x Hunter does not have any filler. The manga has been going on for like 30 years. I mean, maybe not 30 years, 20 years. As long as One Piece, with like a third of the episode count or less, because it just, it takes constant hiatuses. Which is good for it. Hunter x Hunter is very well written because the author takes his time, like, really making sure everything is, like, up to snuff. Which I'm amazed that his publisher allows him to do. I wish more manga authors were able to do that. Maybe he just, maybe he's, like, made... Maybe he doesn't need to be making money constantly. He probably gets enough residuals just from what exists of the manga in the anime. He probably doesn't need to be pressured to push out, like, a chapter every single week, or however it goes with these other shows. I do wish more anime and manga were willing to take their time like it does, though, because it really benefits from it. 
even if it takes forever to come out as a result. The dub of One Piece caught up immensely quickly. I remember a few years ago when the dub was still stuck before Punk Hazard. I think the reason for that is because there was a point at which they started simulcasting. Like, the, the dub was like three or four hundred episodes in. And then they started dubbing from episode five or six hundred. Because that's where the subbed anime was at. And then, as they were doing that, as they were keeping up with the simulcast of One Piece, they went back and they dubbed up until that point that they had started simulcasting. So, as because of the simulcast, you'll have, like, a point where the One Piece dub just jumps several hundred episodes, because they'd already done those episodes. That was a trend that kind of started, and I don't know if people are still doing it. Simulcasting? Simul dubbing. I had heard they were going to do that with uh, Baki the Grappler whenever that new season. I think they did that with a previous one. I don't remember if they did it with JoJo or not. I don't think they, they did for uh, Stone Ocean. Even though it was a, a Netflix series. I don't like these rats. That was a bad time to pick it up. I'm going to get shocked. I tried once again the other day and failed to get uh, Pirate Warriors 3 working with a controller. It's just it's just not going to. I wish I could I wish I could refund it or something, but uh, nope. There's money wasted on a game I can't play. We did Crash Bandicoot Warriors. I want to run around killing, like, thousands of lab assistants. With my spinny fists and my Wumpa Bazookas. This is a stupid idea, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna explore it anyway just for something to talk about. What would weapons in a Crash Bandicoot Warriors-like game be? Crash would have pr Crash would have to have his Wumpa Bazooka just because like what else would he have? I need that. What would Coco have? What what weapon does she ever really her laptop? Does that count? I guess you could have like a, a move set with like some vague hackery matrixy stuff in it. I don't know. really wanted to reach, then Crunch could use the elementals for a moveset. I think you'd have more fun with Pirate Warriors 4 anyway. See, that's the thing. I don't... I don't really care about the gameplay in Warriors games. I just care about the number of characters. I want as many I want as many like characters in the crossover as possible. That's the one and only thing I care about. I guess. I mean, yeah, it's, I, w I wouldn't have enjoyed Hyrule Warriors as much as if the gameplay sucked, but
I wonder if there's three masks on this level. Once again, I'm probably being a little bit too anal with these times. I haven't gotten a Sapphire Relic in how many streams? These guys are what keep getting me. I have to wait for this one, unfortunately, or else have a mask to tank him. I don't really want to have to do that. That's the furthest I've gotten. I'm going to have to start memorizing past that point. Have you seen anyone playing uh, Dragon Ball Breakers? I was kind of curious about this game, but I haven't seen any footage of it. I, I don't really watch anyone who plays games like that, I suppose. There's a channel who does... Uh, like, obscure secrets in, in Budokai and Budokai Tenkaichi games. It's a cool channel. It has a lot of, like, neat little factoids on it. Uh, his most recent video brought up uh, Dra Super Dragon Ball, the fighting game on PS2 that was a port from an arcade game. Nothing to do with Dragon Ball Super. But, uh, apparently... There's a form of Mecha Frieza unique to that game where there's like a skill, a skill tree and you can upgrade him with like a bunch of, a, a bunch of weaponry. Like he can get a giant rocket launcher that he carries around and he can get like grenades that he drops with his tail. It's super bizarre looking. And needless to say, kind of redundant for Dragon Ball. I mean, I say, it's weird to think of stuff like rocket launchers doing anything meaningful, meaningful in a series like Dragon Ball. But at the same time, like the androids are just, they're robots, and yet they can keep up with, with Super Saiyans and shit. So what do I know? <sighs> Bad timing on the fire crates. I guess it's not, like, Frieza with a rocket launcher isn't any weirder than anything Dragon Ball and Fortnite. It's basically already the same thing anyway. Where are you going? I'm having to play careful now because there's enemies whose paths I don't know. I have one mask. Small favors. Fortunately, a lot of this level appears to be going downwards, which is great for speedrunning. Well, speedrunning. I guess this is kind of speedrunning. Oh, uh, I don't- I remember that section. I hate that section. Oh, no. Once again, they put, the, like, the really shitty part at the end of the level for some reason. So they knew what they were doing. These devs just like to see the players suffer.
I wish I could just bounce on that TNT, but as I said on the previous stream of this, unfortunately, in this game, if you blow up a uh, an Aku Aku crate with TNT, you do not get the Aku Aku inside. Which I'm pretty sure you did get him in the original trilogy. I think that noise started with the crash streams. I don't know what it was about this game specifically. I only started going <clears throat> while speedrunning Crash Bandicoot 4. I hit like a, I hit like an EXP cap. I leveled up and Crash 4 unlocked a new Zellrog sound effect. That's too low. Okay. Game really just hates Aku Aku in general. Can't even carry him from level to level. At least he works on Nitro Crates again. What was the game that he didn't? Was that, uh, was that Twin Sanity? I bet there was a re- I bet there was a reason for that. Like, there were some levels where, uh, you couldn't be allowed to go past Nitro Crates. Or you'd like see geometry you weren't supposed to see or some shit. Still got uh, Wrath of Cortex highlights somewhere in the pipeline. That is the uh, that is the crash game I'm on. Finally finished Sonic Shuffle, so I got Sonic Heroes highlights I need to start. Sonic 06 might just be the last Sonic game we stream. Like, where are we gonna go from that? We're never gonna top that. After that, it's just going to be either this game sucks or this game was okay, but it, was, it wasn't, like, noteworthy. I've played Sonic Generations. Sonic Generations is, the mo is, like, the newest Sonic game that I have played. And it was okay. There was no Sonic Adventure 2. It didn't have anything meaningfully going on with, like, the story or anything. It was just a Sonic game that played okay. It was inoffensive. It was safe. I've heard people have uh, changed their tune on Sonic Colors since the Switch remake. I guess. Like, I know the remake was bad, but... Was that retroactively enough to make people dislike the original version of the game? Because I thought that was supposed to be one of the good Sonic games. I've heard people liked uh, Unleashed... Colors and uh, Generations are like the three that I've heard usually positive things about. Post-adventure. Post-heroes, I guess.
Maybe Colors was never that good. Maybe it just had a reputation of being good because it was just the people who were members of the Sonic community at the time. That was the, the, the game they grew up with, therefore it was good. Because that happens a lot. Every Pokemon generation is the best generation if that was your first generation. That's, that's how it works. I like to think that I don't do that. I hope I don't. I have I have nostalgia for the Croc games. I still enjoy them, but I, I'm not going to call them amazing games, because they're definitely not. That's uh, yet another thing that could potentially be on the roster for Jack and I to start. We talked about... Do I streamed Croc 1 on my own. We talked about potentially doing a, uh, like, a co-op co stream of uh, Croc 2. I think the next thing we start will probably be the Mario 64 randomizer, because that won't take more than two, maybe three streams. Could be one stream if it's a randomizer. Okay, these guys have the spikes. Hope I didn't miss any crates. I don't remember if there were any there. Sly 3 is on the docket just because we put that one off for so long. You know what the main, like, kind of selfish reason I kind of want to start Sly 3 is? Is because <laughs> there are YouTubers who have played it who I've wanted to watch their playthroughs, but I haven't because I don't want to spoil myself on the game. That's it. That's the only reason. I don't like going through this level maskless. This worries me. Especially with these green enemies. They move very chaotically. These enemies are agents of chaos, and I don't like that. Oh, there goes my mask. I am now maskless. <sighs> Shit. Have me on for Mario 64. Uh, we'll see. I guess it just depends uh, when we do it and if you're available. I already know the game inside and out, so it's, I, it's not like I would need help with it. It has a... I should see if I can get the, uh... If I can get, like, the crowd control working on that. Because I believe the PC version of Mario 64 does include the, uh, the crowd control functionality. You know, like the Mario 64 versus chat that a lot of people were doing. Which I wish we could do more stuff like that. We just we don't really get enough viewers to for it to work, sadly. I remember uh, one of the videos of Nix that I have archived on our channel is uh, him doing Mario 64 versus Chat from before he started archiving his streams on YouTube. And the main reason that I saved it. It's because it it went completely wrong. It did not function as intended. So instead of... Uh, the way it works is that it's supposed to pull one effect from chat every, I don't know, like 30 seconds or something. 
randomly based on whatever was typed in during those 30 seconds. Instead, what happened with his was that it would do everything that anyone typed in instantly. So chat had full and complete unlimited control over his game. Not only that, but it would continue doing that effect. It would continue inputting it like every frame until a new one came. It was completely unintended, but it was very funny. <laughs> that might be a good version of it for someone to make intentionally. If you could do it with just, like, friends instead of a full, you know, chat of a thousand people. Actually, that's more or less what Croc is going to be, because the way that works is that uh, player two... Like, both players can just control the character. That's it. That's how it works. It has a feature that they called Omniplay, where uh, you can turn on and off as many inputs for Player 2 as you want Player 2 to be able to have. So you, instead of having a separate character like Sonic and Tails or anything, you could just give your little brother a second controller and have him be able to jump whenever he wants to. Which is crippling for a platforming game. It doesn't work at all, but that's why it's funny. I haven't commented on it. This level's got some stanky slap bass. I like that. I like that slap bass. Still ahead of the Sapphire, little as that says. I kind of wish that I could cheese through these with my mask. I get why I can't, because they're, they're, they're fall hazards. There's nothing beyond them, but... If you could save a mask for, like, a very specific point and just fall through a, a certain spot... That feels like it'd be a cool trick on this level. get to that guy fast enough. I know I can. Although even if I do, I end up having to wait for the guy after it, so I guess it's not that high a priority. What is Aku Aku do- sorry, Uka Uka doing in the story of this game again? Does he just disappear? Like, he opens the portal for them to escape the past from Crash 3, and then they just abandon him? He's just gone? He's, he's not an element anymore? Is he still stuck in the past? Oh, man, there! I'm 
don't know why I did that. I know I'm not gonna get the mask from that. I do want to double jump as little as possible because that eats up time, or it slows your horizontal momentum, rather. Not to the degree that it has in previous Crash games, but it still, it still slows you. Which for a game like this is, I guess, for the best. Because it adds some depth to it. If you're discouraged from using it for time trials, it's a good way to have a double jump as just like a little, a little safety feature for casual platforming. While still punishing you for using it in like, you know, serious play. Low skill floor, high skill ceiling. That's the ideal. That's game design. can't make this one fast enough. I always end up having to wait there. I don't like that. No, I need that. <sighs> okay, two masks. Can I get three? Was there a third one? I'm sh I'll bet there was, because there's still plenty of level left. Uh-oh, hello. Some friendly nitro crates. Yep. That's a nice, uh, cheesable section. There we go. Alright. This is great. So if I keep all three masks, I can just, I can blitz through this. Which seems to be by design, because that's a lot of enemies in that section. I hope I'm not missing... Ah, here we go. Ah. My masks don't even help me there. Alright, so I gotta keep my mask. That that's a priority now. And now that I got that far, I'm missing the first jump. guys faces the style of these guys reminds me a little bit of like the uh the cricket from Mulan I don't know why I think I've talked about this game before but there was a uh, there was a game on the PS2 that was essentially a spiritual successor to the uh, the 3D Frogger games. I don't remember what it was called, but it was about a firefly. It's kind of a shame it failed, because I, it would have been cool to see games like that continue to be made. Even just more Frogger games. I like the I like the two Frogger games. 
Still haven't streamed the second one. That's potentially on the docket someday. I'm losing my masks. I need my masks. I've done that big string of enemies before. It's not undoable, but... I guess it's not that big a deal because the section after that, like the masks don't help me with anyway. What was I just talking about anachronism earlier? I think it was I was it was about uh, strangers stranger in paradise. Jack and I had a conversation the other day about the uh, the incredible anachronism of Naruto technology, which it even has a page on the on the Naruto wiki of like all the all the weird shit that they apparently have in a world that is like ostensibly based on old Japan. It's like old world ninja technology until the plot demands that it's not. And then they have like, v they have VCRs and they have batteries. They have film cameras and they have wireless radios. Airships are in Naruto. Uh, apparently there's a dude with a rocket launcher at some point, even though Kishimoto has said that he wanted to avoid having guns in it. Which makes sense, because having guns would raise many questions about why isn't everyone just using guns. And Jack defended it. Jack said he liked that about the series. Because any time a series has that kind of, like, just crazy anachronistic stuff going on, he tries to rationalize it. Which I do, too. I can understand that, if it's to a degree that can be rationalized in some way. I think Naruto is well beyond that, personally. Bleach also does that, where, like, the, uh, the Soul Society's alarm, sy alarm system is a fucking wooden block. It's just, it, it's like just some dude hitting a wooden block with a hammer. That, that's the, that's the, the area-wide alarm for the Soul Society, and yet the R&D department has computers. Granted, they're like weird alien tech-looking computers. They look like something out of Dragon Ball, but they're still computers. Naruto, I'm convinced the dude just doesn't give a shit. Also, yeah, as you pointed out, it, it's there's a leap in technology between, like, each part of the series. By Boruto, they have, like, smartphones, don't they? Or there's at least, like, there's a scene where Shikamaru references not being able to charge his phone fast enough? What is that? What's going on in Ninja World technology? Like, the degree of difference between... A smartphone and thinking to fire a piece of metal with explosive force. No. No, you cannot tell me that this world has smartphones and no one has thought to invent the gun. That's I don't buy that. That's not possible. It has to be, like, forbidden tech, right? Like, people know about guns, but no one's allowed to, uh, no one's allowed to make them. Apparently one appeared in, like, a panel in the manga. By accident, I'm sure, there's, like, one in the background of, like, a shopkeeper's desk or something.
That sequence of enemies still isn't too bad, even without the invincibility. It is nice to have the invincibility, though. I'm good. We're fine. I'm not missing any boxes down here, am I? No. I have to be very careful about when I get on this wall. Oh, no, there's... Th there's three jumps? <sighs> Things implied that the ninja villagers are cut off from the rest of developed society? Okay. I guess, but that kind of begs the question of why? And also, how do they maintain a population doing that? How does everyone not, like, see the technology in, like, other parts of the world and not immediately want to leave the, the backwater ninja village? Because not everyone there is a ninja. There's, like, shopkeepers and shit. Are they just Amish? Is that what's going on in the in the ninja villages? They're just like very selective about what technology they adopt. Dragon Ball has kind of a goofy like state of technology, especially because there's like so much time passes in the Dragon Ball series, but technology never really changes. Other than, you know, androids, but... It is at least consistent in terms of its world building. Like, there's technology that exists and technology that doesn't, and that... Just kind of stays the same. They have capsule technology, they have spaceships, but they still use CDs. I guess that's not entirely true, for stuff that's, like, not important to the plot. Like, I think Bulma has a smartphone by the time Super comes out or something. Dragon Ball has always been a strange mix of, uh... Of, like, sci-fi and fantasy. I guess not always, because it was, it was originally just... Well, no... No, nope, always. In fact, that was kind of the, uh, that was the juxtaposition at the start of the series, was, uh, you had, like, backwoods fantasy hero Goku with his martial arts, you know, superpowers. He doesn't want superpowers, but... Kung Fu Wuxia character Goku as contrasted with, uh, like, modern science girl Bulma. Because that was, like, one of the first technologies in Dragon Ball, was capsule technology. Actually, the world building in Dragon Ball is very similar to the world building in Chrono Trigger. Thematically, they're very similar. A lot more so than, like, uh, than, uh, than Dragon Quest. Which, I don't think Toriyama was involved much with, like, the writing of Chrono Trigger. I think he just did the art. Same as Dragon Quest. The only things I'm aware of that he wrote were, uh, Dr. Slump, Dragon Ball, and, uh, Sandland. If, I don't know if, how obvious it is, but it takes my inversion ability right at that point. If I could keep it just a little bit longer, then I could avoid that bug entirely. Unfortunately, I cannot.
I have highlights coming out. Hopefully on Saturday of our uh, combination randomizer run. I'm almost done with those. I'd like to get Hyrule Warriors done so that I can start uh, Twilight Princess. I guess that's about it. I don't have any like really high priority ones on the docket. It's just kind of all the series that I'm behind on. You know where this anachronism discussion started, I think, is because uh, we were watching the new Urusei Itsura, which also has the... it also has the fantasy sci-fi mix going on. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the stuff in that show, like, you know, Lum's Race, the Oni, are like a sci-fi alien variation of ancient Japanese folklore. But then they also just have regular old Japanese folklore. There's like a, a plain old Kitsune that shows up at some point in the show. They just, they inter intermingle a lot in that series. Uh, but there's a character who uses the old, you know, the trope of, uh, like, cute neighbor girl, girl next door kind of character who gets angry and exhibits super strength. It's an old gag manga standby. And Jack made a joke about, uh, like, Sakura or Tsunade being her ancestor. To which I said, what are you talking about? Naruto technology is more advanced than this technology. This is in the 80s. The show about old Japanese ninjas who keep all their information on scrolls has more modern technology in it than the sci-fi show that takes place in the 80s. One Piece is another one that's very consistent. I will say, in my opinion, Oda, Oda does a much better job world building than Kishimoto does. It's got really weird technology, but you know, similar to like Avatar or your, you know, Miyazaki films, it has its own thing going on, and it, it sticks to it. Like with the, the all, all communication devices in One Piece are comprised of transponder snails. Weird, but consistent. That's fine. As long as it's consistent. Speaking... Here's here's an, an, a case of anachronism. Full Metal Alchemist takes place in the, like... I, I guess it's not really established when it takes place in the manga or in Brotherhood. In the original series, it's explicitly li like, uh, it's like the 20s, the equivalent of our world's 1920s. And you can kind of tell, they don't have a lot of, they don't really have a lot of electronic stuff in Full Metal Alchemist. It's vague kind of Square Enix fantasy era setting. And yet they have auto mail. They have working prosthetic arms that you can hook up to people's nerves. And in some iterations of the story, working cyborg parts. Well, I guess that is a working cyborg part, but more elaborate working cyborg parts. The original series even posits that this is a world where, uh, like, alchemy took the, took the helm as the dominant science over uh, engineering. 
That that's the setting of the original Full Metal Alchemist anime. And yet, despite that, they have auto they have cyborg parts. A little weird. Slayers is consistently a fantasy setting, but they, they play with it a little bit. There's a couple of, like, a giant robot fight episodes. It's just the robots are golems because it's fantasy. And yet it is still, for all intents and purposes, giant robot episodes. I think the weirdest episode in that series might have been one that was like, it was a bunch of old people who were like acting like Power Ranger heroes. It was very off genre. It made very little sense. And it was the only episode of the series that Jack had watched prior to my sh introducing it to him. He didn't know what show it was until we were watching through the whole thing, and he got to that. He was like, wait, I recognize this. Which is the second time he has watched the probably least representative episode of a show before watching any of the rest of the show. Prior to us watching the show together, the only episode of a Shaolin showdown that he had seen was a really weird episode where everyone, like, they go to, like, New York City and they all talk, like, street. It's kind of fascinating to think about just having the completely off first impression of a show just because the only episode you've watched is its weirdest episode. What would be the weird what would be the weirdest like Naruto episode to have only seen that episode? Maybe the one where they uh maybe the filler episode where they're obsessed with finding out what's what's under Kakashi's mask? No, surely there's weirder. Any of the Edo Japan filler episodes of One Piece? The beach episode of Bleach? Or the episode where Hitsugaya try he, he like joins a children's soccer team. The only episode of Dragon Ball Z I've watched is the driving episode. What do you mean the whole show isn't like that? Get up. Move, please. This part's easy. This part is nice and chill. I can just kind of cruise through here. Alright, I got one mask. I'm not going to have invincibility, but that's okay. This is not as bad as it looks, even without invincibility. Because a lot, mostly because a lot of these rats are facing sideways, so I can just... Uh, oh, I can't spin those guys. I could spin them and crash one. If any of the rats had their spikes facing forward, this section would suck. Thankfully, not one of them do. Alright, here we go. Can I go immediately? I might be able to. Go down, please. Okay. Yeah, this section sucks. I hate this. Oh, these rats have their spikes up.
And I wasn't spinning at the right time. I think I could have gone immediately up the up the yo-yo walls that run. Unfortunately, I don't think that's gonna be going to be consistent every run, because the time they start, I think, differs. Yeah, this level sucks. There's a filler episode where Naruto and Hinata st stumble across a mecha version of Naruto. Huh? Like an actual robot? I'm so uh, Wait, there's robots in Naruto? Granted, it's a filler episode, but still. What do you mean, a mecha version of Naruto? Naruto has a metal Sonic? Okay, well, I'm gonna have to tell Jack about that one, the actual robot in Naruto. How is that not on the list, on the wiki? Does it move? It's not just like a doll, is it? Does it talk? Does it have a catchphrase like data bio? Does it say that? Please tell me it says that. See, it's a pun because the normal one is, is date bio. I, I made a joke there because data, like robots. I wonder if there's a count of the number of times he says that in the show. And at what point it stops, because I know it stopped pretty early on. Like, he said it constantly at the very start of the show, and then people real- the authors realized it was annoying and they stopped doing it, for the most part. I'll bet there's like a nod or a reference to it in Shippuden or something, right? Like, someone says it with like a, a raised eyebrow. Like, yeah, believe it. Remember that? You catch that reference I made? Oh man, we had, we had a pirate robot, now we have a ninja robot. We gotta make them fight. We gotta have a death battle. Learning of uh, learning of robot Naruto is the best news I've heard all day. Is there any explanation about it? Like who made the robot? Is this after he's Hokage? I don't know why it sometimes explodes and sometimes doesn't. Hey, when are we gonna get Metal Goku? How come Dr. Dro never made a uh, robot version of Goku? I mean, there's Cell. He's, all, he's got a little bit of Goku in him, but... takes place during Shippuden, and no, there, there's never any explanation as to why they just stumble upon a Naruto robot. Okay. That is the filleriest filler I've ever heard of. That might be on par with the unapologetic- I think the, be the Beach episode of Bleach is the worst episode of Bleach, and I don't think it's close. It's such incredibly unapologetic fan service. Not just because... It's like... What was the premise? It was like Ichigo and Byakuya and all the female characters at the beach. With plenty of time taken to outline the swimsuits that each one was wearing. 
and uh, there was like a, a, a watermelon tentacle monster attack. That was the Bleach Beach Filler episode. Let's talk about the worst episodes of series. I don't know what I would call the worst Naruto episode that I've seen, because I, I saw the entire original series, and I saw, I, like, I don't know, a third of Chippuden? Probably less. I remember a, a very annoying filler episode of Naruto being, uh... They had to take care of, like, some kid who is rich, and he just, he throws money at all his, all of his problems, and shouts out, like, Cash Jutsu. And I don't think he ever really got any comeuppance for it. That wasn't a great one. I didn't enjoy that episode. DBZ's worst filler episodes were just boring. I don't remember any that were offensively bad, but I remember some that were really boring. The ones involving early Gohan, I particularly didn't like. I guess they were kind of memorable, but... Like, I remember all of them. I don't remember liking any of them. Where he, like, finds a bunch of orphans living at a, at a camp together. Running from Child Protective Services. Dragon Ball has Child Protective Services. Which is good, I guess. I'm glad they do. It's just a weird thing to, uh... I guess it's an interesting thing to note that we learned from a filler episode. It was it was part of some some uh, some character arc where he was going back home to avoid his training with Piccolo, and then he decided not to in the end. Which I guess is noble. I don't think a four-year-old would make that decision. I'm gonna use the word cringe. Marin was pretty cringe. Krillin's filler girlfriend. I didn't like the episodes that she was in. I think I've mentioned before, any of the Edo Japan episodes of One Piece are some of my least favorites. I don't like AU stuff in anime. Oh! No, you know, what? Well, is it worse than the Beach episodes? There were a couple of really, really stupid episodes of Bleach that were, there were filler episodes that were made based off of, like, art inserts that had the characters in, like, stuff like Halloween costumes and Arabian get-ups. Those were some bad Bleach filler episodes. I dislike those ones. There were a couple of uh, filler episodes of One Piece that were based off of manga gag manga gags. Namely thinking of, uh, I think it was called Chopper Man. There was just a lot of very unfunny gag manga stuff going on. With cameos from, I guess, Japanese pro wrestlers because Oda likes pro wrestling, I suppose. Yeah, there's like one or two pro wrestlers who just make ca animated cameos in One Piece filler episodes. Hunter x Hunter is a hard one, because that show does just doesn't have filler. I don't 
think I can. Oh, hello. I don't think I can think of a worst Hunter x Hunter episode. Other than I guess maybe just one of the really er early ones because it's it's slow. There's not much happening yet. I can't think of a Hunter x Hunter episode that offend offended me for being overwhelmingly stupid. The worst Ronma one half episode is way too big a pool to choose from. I can't think of any like Inuyasha episodes that immediately stand out as especially bad. What are some other series? I said this is basically a podcast stream. These these craft streams. They're very similar to the Pokemon streams in that way, except I'm by myself, so I just I talk about whatever I can think of. Which is usually animation and video games. Man! I wanted that mask. Worst My Hero Academia episode. Whoa! Bobby? I guess like a recap episode. They had one or two of those. That's another series that doesn't really do filler. They have like one filler episode per season at most. I don't know why I did that. I know I don't get the mask doing that. I haven't watched a, a lot of uh, modern shonen. It's pretty much just my hero. Jack has wanted us to watch a Demon Slayer because he started that and was enjoying it. I don't know anything about it, though. First Yu Yu Hakusho episode was almost certainly a clip show. I'm pretty sure that series had one or two. Rewatching it, uh, the episode with the the the, the triad in the during the Tagoro arc <laughs> that didn't age well. Where Yusuke grabs the trans demon's balls. Yeah, that happened. Worst Yu Gi Oh! episode. That's another series that had at least interesting filler arcs. I don't think I hated any of the filler arcs in Yu Gi Oh! The Duel Monsters, the original series. Other than. I do remember disliking one of them. I think it was the second to last arc. There was like a... There was like a very unnecessary tournament arc. With some like... Uh, it was some long purple haired pretty boy German dude. Who was talking shit to Kaiba.
Which you'd think it's a tournament arc. Tournament arcs are great. How do you fuck up a tournament arc? Uh, well, they didn't... Like, all of the characters in the tournament, like, two-thirds of them were just, like, stereotypes. You had the Sherlock Holmes dude. You had the chef dude. You had the, 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 I don't know, the, the British dude. And you didn't see any of them duel. It, it just cut to them losing and giving, like, a stereotypical one-liner what, for whatever their gimmick was. It was a tournament arc where you didn't see any of the matches. That was a pretty, that was a pretty bad arc. I don't remember any specific episodes from it, though. I kind of wish I remembered late, late Yu-Gi-Oh a little bit better. Mostly just so I could compare what the, uh, what 4Kids changed about it. Because a lot of the really obvious changes were made in, like, the early Yu-Gi-Oh episodes. Or I guess they're series-wide, so you, you become immediately aware of them during the early episodes. Okay, I have one mask. Did I lose that one? Did I just lose a mask? Oh, I think I'm supposed to have two masks at this point, so I'm still- I'm not gonna get invincibility, but that's okay. Having two masks is still good. I end up doing the podcast thing because a lot of this is just going through the motions of the things that I've already done a hundred times. Getting back to the point of the level that I know I've been to already. All right. Oh no, I do have the I do have the correct number of masks. This is the third one. All right. I can't quite go immediately. I don't like this. Keep saying it. I'm gonna keep saying it. That part sucks. Is a convenient enemy spin? Okay, what is this? This is the slowdown mask. And no another invincibility? Yes. Uh. Whoa! Hell! Ah! Oh, how did I thread the needle like that? Ah, oh, I was doing so well. I got two invincibilities. two hours now. So keeping your masks is pretty good in this level. I want to keep these things. Here's a weird one. Worst Teen Titans episode. I don't know if I can say this definitively, but I'm pretty sure at least... I know Jack's least favorite episode was the very final one in the series. And that's one that's like a sour spot for a lot of people. Because it features like a major character getting reincarnated, basically. And having 
A, no knowledge of any of the previous events of her former life, and Beast Boy just completely not picking up on this, and it being super awkward and uncomfortable to watch the entire time. That's usually a sour spot for what makes a bad episode, is a character just acting way dumber than you know they should be. Speaking of, worst Full Metal Alchemist episode. Uh, that Alphonse one was pretty bad that we talked about during the crossover randomizer stream. With the, uh, there's like a, a, an arc in the manga and in both versions of the anime. Where Alphonse starts to believe that he has, like, he has fake memories. His brother's not his real brother. He's being used. He's just an invention. An automaton. A robot, if you will. I did read an article pointing out, like, how stupid one of the, uh... One of the non-manga canon episodes of the original anime was, and in retrospect, I do agree with it. I still don't know if it's quite the worst episode in the series, but there is an episode that is predicated on the notion that, like, an orphan boy has been taking care of his little brother and has hated his mother for abandoning them in a fire, but the twist of the episode is that the mother was blind and didn't know that they were, like, hiding in that room. The show, the show does a better job of explaining it than I just did. But, anyway, the stupid part of it is the insinuation that, like, an eight-year-old child could possibly not know that his mother was blind. That doesn't happen. No, that's something that you would know pretty much immediately about someone who you shared a house with. So that was a, that was not a great episode. I don't remember any single episodes of Brotherhood that uh, really really stood out in a negative way. Just on a specific episode basis. I remember scenes. Like, I remember the boob scene. I remember the way that uh, Lust died was, in my opinion, really stupid. Because it was such a generic, just overdone shonen trope. Of, uh, the homunculus were kind of like puzzle bosses in the original series. And dealing with them involved a lot of, uh, it usually involved character arcs. There was, there was dramatic tension behind it. There were steps to it. And then Brotherhood comes along, and the way Lust dies is that, uh, Mustang gets really angry, and he snaps more. And because, he, he snaps more, and he snaps angry, and then she blows up enough, and she dies. You know what I loved about uh, Vegeta and Cell is that they subverted that trope. Is that you get really angry and then you get really powerful. Which, it, there's some degree of truth to that in real life. There's like adrenaline, but... You also get stupid when you're angry. And for a series that's like a martial arts series... I, I don't think... I don't like that. I, I think that's a dumb idea for... A, a dumb thing to suggest. And I like that Vegeta's rage during the Cell Saga was totally impotent. Especially because it was such a... It was like a character developing... De character developing moment for him. That he couldn't draw on anger for all of his power. Similar to like Zuko and Last Airbender did that. It's unhealthy to do that. It's not a good thing. 
And then Super comes along and it just kind of goes back to doing the usual shonen anime thing. And Vegeta gets angry and he gets powerful and that's just, it's just as simple as that. I think we can all agree that uh, the best episode of Evangelion is when they ran out of budget, and so they just cut to everybody clapping, and that was the end of the series. Now this is cinema. I think we need focus time now. I'm, I'm focusing. I'm paying attention. I say. I promise I am, though. I pro I'm not dying because I'm talking. Unless you're talking about yourself in Castlevania. Come on. It's not worth that one box. I want to keep the masks, because that, that invincibility is, is so nice to have. I, I, I know if I'm uh, I know if I'm getting distracted while playing a game. That came up when I would uh, commentate Smash events at times. I can talk and play just fine because it's just kind of uh, it just kind of happens. I, ju I just I just speak my mind as I'm doing it. If someone else is talking, I can't listen and play at the same time. So I can't like have a co-commentator and play the game while they're talking. That I can't do. doing highlights of, of Rascal, a game I played for 30 minutes that ran horribly. Probably not. Probably wouldn't be a very interesting highlights video. I hate these bugs. I hate these just wait for them to be at the right moment enemies. Bugs in the fire crates. Anything that I can't, like, bait. Also, what is... Ba Why is there a Bowser shell in the water? Is that only in the Switch version? Do you see that? They can't do that in non-Switch versions, can they? I don't know if Bowser's shell is copyrighted. So these, these are the worst. <sighs> I missed the wall. Maybe I should just try to go immediately. I feel like if I do, then I'll have wasted that the attempt up to that point just to, like, see, though.
At least we have Seinfeld to keep us company on this level. Oh, I lost my mask! Man! I can make it through this batch of enemies that I can get the invincibility the second time. I don't know if that's going to happen. Thankfully, invincibility doesn't inherently grant me any more speed in this. Right, thankfully. I don't, maybe it's thankful. I guess it means I'm not contingent on getting all three masks in order to get a good time. No, 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 no. Almost fell off. Didn't. Alright, one mask. Alright, I'm going for it. No, because then that one's there, so I can't go immediately. I do have to wait at least a little bit there. Also, if I jump up that water, I can get to the bug faster, and probably why I can one-cycle it that way. Yeah. I think this box seems to be the safest way to jump up there. Probably even jump on the box afterwards. In fact, the more of these I jump on, that that's faster than going in the water, jumping on those boxes. A little bit. accidentally go too fast on that part and kill myself. Come on. Get the clock. What's the next level going to be like? I don't remember what the next one is. Is it a Cortex level? No, it's not, is it? Man! I wonder what those PSP Daxter and uh, Clank games were like. I don't think I've ever actually seen anyone play them. Uh, bad momentum shenanigans happen there. going because I'm probably being like too anal. Maybe. I say that. I say that I'll get I'll get gold every time, but I I still end up like nowhere near platinum every time. It's been a while since I got a platinum on stream, which means the last two levels Oh, I'm not looking forward to those.
Ah! I guess it's not specifically a Bowser shell, it's just a spiked creature. Okay, if I one-cycle the first one, I get kind of bad timings on the rest of those bugs. That's alright. I can just avoid those ones. so far. Still got my mask. For now. Uh, no, somehow that didn't take it. Looked like it should have. Darian, can you send can you send me the like is there like a wiki page for robot Naruto? I want to send that to Jack. That also did not take my mask even though it looked like it should. All right, got invincibility. go immediately. Maybe now? Yeah, okay. Second cycle. Can, can I go immediately on this one? Yes, I can. Okay. I just need to wait for the second cycle of the first yo-yo. I hate that I have to, like, spend so many lives getting to that point of the level just to learn that small part of it that I keep dying to. Alright, invincible again. Great. That's awesome. Now I would like to not die! Oh. End of the level. End of the level. Yes! Gotta be gold. Alright. 17 more seconds off for platinum. I don't know how soon we'll get to the, uh, the final stream of this game, because I'm gonna have to get all these platinums off stream before I can do it. It was an Radit Orochimaru... Okay. Dr. Ro Orochimaru Nick... Made a metal version of Naruto, but it backfired. It still couldn't beat Naruto. He used his secret robotics jutsu. He has lots of secret jutsus. Okay, toxic tunnels. This was the really this was a really long level, wasn't it? What was the time on this level? Uh this, this level took me two minutes and 30 seconds. This level is a whole minute longer. That one's three minutes. That one's also about three minutes. This is the longest level. This is the one that has, I believe, the five gems path on it. 
Let's try it. Well, okay, that's that's three and a half minutes for the Sapphire Relic. Gold Relic will probably be about three minutes. Also, I have about 45 minutes because uh, I'm supposed to do JoJo in a little bit. Alright, just gotta make sure. Nope, no, no crates behind me. Nothing too bad so far. That's a, that's a rope equivalent. I have to grab that. Alright, so far this level doesn't seem as bad as the previous one. I'm gonna jinx myself by saying that. I know I am. I should probably just make, make sure that I don't get any... I don't get like a bunch of three crates from hitting that exclamation switch. No? Okay, so I don't need to worry about that. Can I jump over that, I wonder? What just happened? Y'all see that? That was bullshit. Somehow that didn't... I don't understand these rats. Sometimes they kill me and sometimes they just don't. Okay. I wonder if that was a sign that the switch has been at it for too long. I've noticed that. Sometimes if you use your switch for too long, it overheats and games start doing weird stuff. You start walking through the ground in Hyrule Warriors. Shit like that. No. Ah! I didn't realize that I had. I was already on the wall. Needs to be like a sound effect when you when you stick to the wall. It's not as obvious as you would think it is. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm good. I'm fine.
I'm gonna be mad if that happens again. Whatever it was with that platform just jumping position. I need to rush less. Maybe if I just take my time in this time trial. Maybe I'll still get the gold time anyway. You say the robot Naruto backfired. What did, did it end the episode attacking Orochimaru? What happened? What do you mean it backfired? the dev time relics in this game are, like, frame perfect. So I have been told. I don't know if that's entirely true, but uh, given the times that they have, I would believe it. Bad man! fast. I ain't got time to wait for minecarts. I can outrun the minecarts. No, no one ever talks about the, the ethical implications of the fact that uh, artificial souls exist in Bleach. That's like a concept they introduce immediately, too. You can just like go go to the go to the, the Soul Reaper store and buy Pez. That have fake souls to occupy your bo occupy your body with. What are, what are the implications of that? Like the type that Rukia gets is called Chappy. That that's the name of the fake soul. Can Chappy be considered a character? What's her story? There are mass-produced Chappies. Not to be confused with the. Wasn't there a movie about, like, a, a robot rabbit called Chappie or something? Which, obviously, I found hilarious when it came out because of that comparison. Especially since the Chappie souls are, like, rabbits. Oh, that's the fire platform. I can't stay on that. At least it's very forgiving time. Oh, it, we're good. I made it. That's a lot of waiting in that section. I don't like that. We're good. We're fine. We are here. Like all might. Uh oh! Ah! Well, at least the start of the level is easy. It gets annoying a little further down. Still don't think it's as bad as the last level.
you could pretty easily adapt Bleach, or aspects of Bleach, to be about, to be like sci-fi and to be about AI. Specifically the, the soul candy and mod soul stuff. Because that's basically what Cone and other mod souls are. They're soul candies that have become too self-aware. It's a little oversimplifying, but... That's the fundamental moral quandary of mod souls. Like Dragon, I don't think Dragon Ball ever really cared about that. Like it acknowledged that uh, Doctor Jiro just kidnapped a couple of teenagers and turned them into robots. They never really spent a lot of time exploring that. In fact, it didn't like seem to affect them at all. Eighteen's just fine. She's she's cool being an android. Oh, she doesn't like having a bomb inside her, but she's never experienced any, like, uh, existential crises on screen, at least. Dragon Ball just isn't really a series to do that. A little more likely in GT. GT might have been willing to do that. It didn't, though. Maybe if the, if the Super 17 Saga had not been uh, rushed in Dragon Ball GT. We could have gotten some, uh, some more detailed questions about androids. Quote-unquote androids. Like they're cyborgs. Most of them. Why did he go that way? I spun him from the other direction. I'm gonna do it. I got half an hour left to do this level. I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna get at least gold. Rats are very inconsistent. In terms of when it's safe to attack their shield in various positions. As opposed to, like, Crash Bandicoot 1 only really cared about what attack you used. The, the village dudes with the shields, even if their shield, even if you were coming at them from up top, as long as you spun them, it would get them, because it was a side attack. This game's not like that. I'll bet I could get there fast enough to one-cycle this pipe. I'll bet I could one-cycle that as well if I were a little faster. There's a lot of the stuff that I could optimize, and probably will have to for Platinum on this level! Oh, there goes my mask. A stupid bug. I have to wait out this bug, because if I don't... He'll go flying into the TNT. That wasn't worth waiting for. Okay, so this platform takes longer than three seconds. Noted. I remember these bats being annoying. I don't remember exactly why they're annoying, but I remember them being annoying.
Okay, new section. Oh, that's a, that's an elevator. That moves. God damn it. I'd like I need I need Mario Party. I need like a toad to show up and explain everything in the level to me before I start the level. Boy, that'd just be swell in this game. how much rabid fan art exists. That just occurred to me. Like, obviously, there's pro there probably is not a Toad Crash Bandicoot, but I'll bet there might be a rabid Crash Bandicoot and rabid versions of other non-Mario characters just because Rabbids X Mario opened the, opened the door of thought. Can I just... I don't even need to crouch through that. Why am I crouching? I can just walk through and spin. Slightly better pattern that time. Still not perfect. Could do better. At least this platform is timely. I appreciate that. These platforms I don't have to wait long for. They just kind of line up by themselves. I went for the crate again, even though... This is not worth it. This takes more than three seconds. I think they have deceptive hitboxes, the bats. I think that's why they were annoying. I got the uh, ice cream truck in the background has come to visit. Surely there's a faster way to do this. Okay, here's the elevator, which I'm sure I can speed up at least a little bit somehow. Where am I going? Okay, I'm going down here. Oh, no. I missed that. I wanted to one-cycle this. No! I'm good. I'm fine. We are Gucci. Not a problem. Think we're getting close to the end? Maybe? <sighs> I don't like the cycles I'm getting. I also keep boxes keep fucking up my platforming. It's the end. It's the end. Please go. Gold? Please be gold. Please be gold. Sapphire. I need to shave six seconds off. Uh, how much time? I have 25 minutes left. I'm gonna keep trying. I want to get at least gold. If I run out of time, well, I guess that's that. Oh, I, I didn't hit. I wanted to hit re re retry. I can definitely see myself optimizing those, like, moving platforms more. It looks like a lot of waiting, but I can tell that they're positioned just such that you can... You can one-cycle a lot of... You can cut out a lot of that waiting. How hot is it outside today? It is 84 degrees. In Battleground. 
Yeah, you, you said it, Coco. I actually like, I actually like heat. I keep my house very warm. My duplex. Usually like around 80 degrees. I don't know why, for some reason, natural heat is worse. If it came from the sun, then it bothers me. Picked up Zuma's Revenge on the DS yesterday. Favorite puzzle game of all time. Is that the one with, like, the... It's like, it's like a, a, a spiral of balls, and you shoot colored balls at the balls. Is that that one? I think our first ever video recording was in a pop cap game. It was in San Aquarium Deluxe, which is a very weird first game to do a YouTube video in. I like that one though. It's kind of an unknown pop cap game. I like in San Aquarium Deluxe, I like the first uh, Plants vs. Zombies. I don't remember if I played any of the other Plants vs. Zombies. I might have played two, but I, I remember two getting quite a bit harder than one. I'm not quite skilled enough for the Plants vs. Zombies sequel. I never played enough of the first game on Facebook. function if it gets too hot. Yeah, I hear that from people. I should just, I should just go back to jumping over those. That's safer. Let's do that. I want that. I want that box. Uh, I was supposed to have a work day today. I need to get some writing done, but, uh, no, I was just... I, I wasn't feeling up to anything. I really... I rely a lot on a regularity, so having yesterday just completely go off schedule... I think I just... I needed a, I needed a recovery day to get back on track. I say I'm gonna jump over, and then I fail to do so. I've mentioned that uh, I quit my job working as a bus driver, and I would like to get by doing, you know, creative work, voiceover, and uh, writing, which I went to college for, but, uh, so far I've applied to several voiceover, uh, just gigs, and I've not heard back on any of them, so... That wasn't great. That was a little waste of time. I haven't really applied to a whole lot on the writing front because uh, I don't have anything on my profile to demonstrate. I published like short stories in uh, in like college journals and things, but nothing that uh, nothing really relevant to what I'm applying for. I have a uh, I have a teleplay for a series I started a long time ago. I think I want to uh, I want to go back and polish that up, get it in like a, a completed state, just so I can put something on my resume. Oh, 
Okay, one cycle that. Spin those. I still did not one cycle the rope. It'd be great if I just didn't have to worry about money. Which, I, obviously, that's a very redundant statement, but... I, some people, some people get purpose from, you know, day-to-day -day work. I think a lot of people do. I just, I just want to create. I want to be able to write and make videos and just not have, it, have to worry about having an income. Because that, that just sucks up all my time and energy. And that makes me very miserable. I'm still not one cycling that rope. Pipe. There we go. Okay, I can one cycle this. Get up on here. Yeah, that's a good pattern. I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, that worked out, actually. How long was there a box there? I've never seen that box before. Well, that is great, because that gives me something. I don't need to stop in the middle with that. I have lots of writing ideas and lots of experience writing, but... Uh even if I were to immediately find a publisher and get something on shelves, that's not something that I, like, immediately get paid for. Resi residuals can take a while, so unfortunately that's not an immediate solution to any money problems. We'll see how the future goes. I'm gonna stop bringing the stream down now. I see a couple more people in chat. Hello, whoever's watching. Welcome to the stream. I wonder if part of the reason that we don't get a ton, a ton of people is just because, like, the types of streams are very different between what Jack does and what I do solo. It's a lot more chill when it's just me. I guess. Nah, the Pokemon- the stuff like the Pokemon streams always end up to be, like, pretty chill. Cycle this. Come on. We're doing it. We're getting better each time, and then that stupid bug shows up and zaps me. That's a good timing. I like that. And I don't need to wait for that platform at all, in fact. I can just, uh... I can go straight off that three crate. Ah, squished.
I'm now getting to those minecarts at an inopportune time. What? Well, actually, that kind of worked out. I got I got here a little bit faster doing that. Lost my mask. That's okay. Maybe I can one cycle it this way. No. I might not have to wait for the swing. If I can jump off fast enough. I don't know what my plan was there. It's really bizarre to me that Cortex, the, the villain, does not have a way to, like, destroy enemies. I think I mentioned that last stream. I get that the reason for that is because... If you destroy an enemy that you need to turn into a platform, it would, like, screw your progress. It's still just kind of a weird quirk of the way that Cortex is designed in this game. Jump off! I don't think that saved a lot of time. Just a little. It's a wee bit of frames. Ah! Man. I need that crate. That was a good crate, and I want it. That was the part of the stream where I'm out of things to talk about. Just, uh, just wanted to update all of you on that fact. Fine. Run's not over yet. 
Lost another mask. Oh, that the bug breaks it. That's what's happening. I feel like this is a spot that I could save some time. The, the sideways minecarts. On one hand, it's nice when they don't run into the TNT because I don't risk getting exploded. On the other hand, I think them blowing it up is faster than me jumping on top. Whoop. We're good. We're fine. We are Gucci. No, get up there. Thank you. So that is what happened. Okay. Uh, interesting. I don't know what that was. I think I was technically still spinning when I landed on them. That must have been what happened. Ah, just run into that. That's okay. We got this. This is the run. This is the one. This right here. You're watching history. World record. I was just kidding. This is the run. This one. This is the time. I wonder if it's better to eat that TNT hit. That nitro hit, rather, because that would save, like, a second. Ah! That just lost several. Technically, we only need to worry about that, uh about the crash behind us. As long as we're ahead of him, we're ahead of pace. Because that's the gold ghost. Here we go. Man! Cut a little time there. But I can get up here, yeah. Yeah, that's what we want. No, oh, Mr. Tepat! I'm mad.
There we go. Blow up the TNT. Get all of those. We're doing it. This is the time. This is the run. I don't understand why some of these rats go off when they do, and why some of them don't. crash. That's good. Quite a bit ahead of them. If I just complete the level at this point, I might have it. I might, I might just have just optimized enough little stuff to, to make it now. I'm just, I'm not making it to the end anymore. Okay, so I cannot squeeze through there. I thought maybe I could. I cannot. Or if I can, it's very, very tight and risky. Okay, that's fine. That'll blow it up. Lost one cycle. That's not great. He's gonna catch up to me now. I'm only slightly ahead of Crash. That's not good. I should be way ahead of Crash. Wait, how'd he get up so fast? What was that? What magic route is he taking? And it's not that magic, I'm still ahead of him most of the time, but... He's doing something I'm not doing, and I don't like it. Alright, now we're tied. What does he do? Does he kill this bug? I could one cycle that. I'm pretty sure I can get in there. Alright, I am now ahead again. <sighs> Keep losing a mass to that. I don't like that. No! D jump! D I'm good. I'm fine. Lost a little time. Not the end of the world. I don't think it's worth getting that one crate. I think I'm better off just going ahead. Waiting. I don't like waiting for platforms. Time waited is time wasted. Okay, here we go. This seems like decent pace. I don't actually remember what time we're aiming for! Really? The enemy that was blown into the nitro at the end of the level blew me up just before the end of the level. Well, that's just lovely. 
I have so much fun playing this game. I'll bet that was it, too. I'll bet that was on time. I don't know that it was. I don't know what the time is, but... I'll bet that was the run. If I were... If I were a polygon.com further... From those nitros. Ah, oh, that would have been it! The platforms jumped again. What are they doing? Why do they do that? I know I can get up that faster. I haven't figured out quite how yet, but I know it, I'm sure it's possible. supposed to be a crouch, not a slide. Oh, it's past seven now. Uh, Alright. This is this is my last attempt. I, I want one more good attempt. I want one more time that I get, like, far into the level, and then I'll call it. Because as I said, I do have an obligation at around seven, so... Did Elf ever respond? I don't see any new messages in the uh, JoJo chat. I guess he probably wouldn't respond in there anyway. No, not the... So this seems to be one platform ahead of where the Crash Ghost is boarding. So that's good. I'm at least ahead of that. In fact, I was beating him that last run because I hadn't seen him in a while. I just, you know, died. I know I can make that. Oh, that's so makeable. So make a tsunami -able. I'll bet if I spent a mask blowing up that TNT. Because I have two masks at this point. That might be worth it because I'd get an extra full second off. Just from that one more, uh, that one more crate exploding. That's doable. That's one cyclable. Good to know for platinum. Which this will not be, but... No! Aw, oh, man! I just lost so much time from that. And I did the butt stomp. Why did she do the butt? Okay. No one is online. I'm going... I'm, I'm so close. 
I'm gonna keep going unless, like, Elf responds. It's not, it's not even that, like, lofty a goal. I'm not even trying to get Platinum on stream. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to end the level at this point. I got it once, I got Sapphire, but... All the other ones I got were gold. I probably, some of the earlier levels in this... I don't remember if I settled for Sapphire. I think I probably did. I don't think I've gotten every gold on stream. I say as if trying to rationalize to myself why I don't need to be doing this. I'm still doing it. I don't need to listen to myself. to one cycle that. Yeah, he's doing something weird here that I haven't quite figured out. He also seems to be falling back down again or something. He's not keeping up with me, despite whatever he was doing. Okay, maybe the platforms aren't always at exactly the same time, because he is now slightly behind me. This music track sounds very jungly for what this level is. I will not try to one-cycle that again. I think it's doable if I were just a little bit faster, but I don't think I'm going to do it. Not on this stream, anyway. Maybe when, maybe when I'm eventually doing Platinum. I'll have to learn to do that. See, I landed on them while spinning, but that time it didn't hurt me. It's very inconsistent, these rats. Why can't they be consistent like the nice tribal boys? This far with my mask intact. I don't remember where the second mask is. Ah! I needed that. I wanted that. That crate was important to my cause. doable. Wait, where the rat where's the rat that time? One of them failed to spawn. This game just kind of falls apart sometimes, specifically on this level. This level has had the most like problems 
Presumably because of the switch. I'm gonna I'm gonna find a way to blame the switch in some way. I mean find a way, it just it doesn't seem like a stretch. I just, I just spin that for fun. Why not? Seemed like a good idea at the time. <sighs> Why didn't that hurt me? Who knows? I don't know that the original trilogy is a shining hitbox of like con a shining example of uh, consistent hitboxes. I do know that this game sure is not. Coco just loves to sp loves to spin. She's Coco for Cuckoo Puffs. That's a mascot that just kind of stopped appearing. I think. Are they still using the... Was it Sunny? The, like, brown chocolate bird? Maybe people thought he was insensitive to, uh, you know, crazy people. People with real Cocoa Puff addictions. Did not have patience for sunny shit. Bounced on him, I could have one cycled it. Surely I could cut time here somewhere. You know what would probably sell if they made it really, really well? A serial mascot platform fighter? I'm not joking. Like, if they made a, a well-made Smash Brothers with serial mascots, people would buy it and people would play it. Right? I just, I just fumbled everything there. Why do I just lose momentum? That's the second time that's happened. Am I hitting the... Maybe I was hitting the, the platform above me and not noticing it. This'll be a short stream. I'll only do three levels. We'll be done with this in no time. See it like it's dropping frames too. The switch is chugging on this level. Oh, to have known this was coming to Steam.
Whoops, that wasn't the place to land. I'm fine. I just I lost a mask. I'm all right. Would Captain Crunch have like a sword and a musket? Would he would he be like full privateer? What kind of ship does he captain? Is he a naval captain? Does he have a crew of swarthy sailors working for him? See, this is the lore that we need that we can only get from a mascot serial fighting game. The, uh, the bad guy can be like, uh, they can have some weird crossover story, an original story for the game, and the bad guy can be like a dude in a cloak with a spoon. Just called the serial killer. Very mysterious. Quite a wide variety of characters among serial mascots. We've got a bunch of animals, we've got a naval captain, a vampire, a ghost, a fake Frankenstein. Really would have liked that box. That might not be do withoutable, that box. That was a three box. We got elves. I think Snap, Crackle, and Pop are elves. Are they elves? They look like elves. bad it would be licensing hell. Oh, there's only two companies involved. There's Post and Kellogg. I'm gonna main Cornelius the Rooster. No one's gonna stop me. That's right, I'm old school. Okay. I am now here. Okay, we are where we want to be. We're at the end of the level. Oh, I blew my mask! <sighs> okay, what's our time? We got gold. Only another 11 seconds off for platinum. But I can do that off screen, off stream, so that's okay. All right, well, that's it for today. That went longer than anticipated, about half an hour longer. Uh, so next time, I will have to... Well, I, I will have caught up to all the Platinums except for these two levels. So the next stream will be comprised of getting the Platinum on these two levels. And because it will have to be Platinum, it'll probably be like two hours per level, if not more. 
Oh, the finale is going to be a, a, a meaty one. I don't know when that will be, though, because I do need to get all the previous Platinums before I do that. Uh, we'll probably stream something with Jack this weekend. We'll see. I got the Mario 64 beta that I want to do soon. So, something coming up in the next couple days. That's it for today. Thank you for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.